Um, for some quick introductions, as you know, I'm Andy White. I'll be hosting the first part of today's webinar. Also with me are my colleagues who you've already met, Frankie Stevens and Martin Schweitzer. And today we've also got Tom Honeyman, who will help facilitate as well. Uh, Tom is the Anstutter Consultant in New South Wales who's interested in being involved today due to um, BPA being one of the institutions he works with. We And we've also got Ming Fang Wu here as well. She's also from the Ants Melbourne office who's um, seeing how we, we operate the, the workshop. Um, we anticipate the workshop will take about an hour and a half. It depends on how much interaction we get and how many people end up turning up. There will be breakout sessions and the opportunity for group discussions, which we highly encourage. But just be aware that um, it's difficult for technology to work properly if there's more than one person speaking at a, at a time. So just keep that in mind. Um, and try not to talk over one. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, uh, what Andy was going to cover today was a quick review of FAIR. We're going to then show you some exemplar records that meet the FAIR criteria. We're going to also present a case study for you of where um, some uh, Activity's been done around FAIR. We'll introduce you to the ANS data self-assessment tool, and that has recently gone live uh, in the last few days, and uh, you'll get to try that out. And then we'll be uh, looking at the systems that are involved in the um, GBL and BPA systems, um, and looking at tools and data and, and seeing how we can make all of those things more fair. And the idea is that at the end of the day, we'll come about with an action plan for how to make improvements or fair improvements to those uh, softwares. Uh, so the first thing here is a quick video that recaps why FAIR is important, especially when we're talking about uh, data sharing. So I'll play that with you, uh, for you even, and um, it doesn't matter that there's no sound because there is um, subtitles. Oh.
So I've just uh, unshared my screen so that Andy can uh, take over the reins again. So Andy, if you want to start sharing your uh, slides from the one following the video, that'd be awesome. Okay, hopefully that's worked. <coughs> it has. Excellent. Okay, so my apologies for that. Um, obviously there's some network issues here, Griffith, and uh, set my whole system down. Um, okay, so let's uh, recap there very quickly. Um, just to, to reiterate, so the, the F stands for findable, enabling users or others to discover your data through rich metadata available online as searchable as a searchable resource and using persistent identifiers. The A is for accessible, meaning humans and machines should be able to access the data through clearly defined means using open standards and protocols such as HTTPS or APIs. Um, and it may or may not be open. The I is for interoperable. Data and metadata should be in recognized and standardized formats to allow it to be combined and exchanged and includes the use of controlled vocab vocabularies and um, ontologies. And finally, the R is for reusable, um, meeting domain standards with a clear license and a clear path on how and why and by whom the data has been created. So you should all be experts in that by now, I would imagine. You could almost do the training yourselves. So here's a simple example to illustrate some of these concepts. The, um, the Australian National Mooring Network facility has a series of reference stations and moorings designed to collect time series observations of temperature and salinity in Australian coastal areas. Now, if we were a researcher seeking the data and did a simple Google search for the data and, ent and entered Australian mooring temperature and salinity time series into Google, uh, we'd get the following results. Now, if we were to click on the first result, that takes us to Research Data Australia, which is a registry of data sets which harvests data about this collection, including a summary of licensing details, description of the data, when it was created, related services, and organizations, subjects, and identifiers. Now, if we click on that, that go to data provider button there, um, it takes us to the in integrated marine observing system repository, which hosts some metadata, including further details about the, the instruments and the data. So on this screen, there's even more information about um, the data we're, we're interested in including citation reference information, current contact details. If you want to know more about the data, keywords, licensing information, um, which is clearly stated and under what, which conditions you can access and use the data. There's geospatial information, how often the data is updated, quality details, constraints around the data, um, the data standards that are used, and, t and detail around how the the data was collected. There's also an explanation on the parameters used to describe the data using standard vocabulary terms, including links to the definition of the vocabulary term. This is all available in XML, so that can be read by other systems, which automating access to, to all of this. Uh, finally, to access the data, you go to the sister site, the AODN, and manually download the data in a range of standard formats which suits your needs. So overall, it's a very efficient way for anyone to find the data, understand what it's about, understand its limitations and how it can be reused, whether that be in human or machine formats. So I think that sort of provides a good example of, of the sort of direction that we're, we're looking um, in for, for systems and interoperability and, um, and, a, and, a f and fairness around systems. Um, it's probably a good time in the presentation to talk 
about what others are doing in this space internationally. There's a lot going on and it changes very quickly. Um, so I'm only going to, to touch on a, a couple of these points. But uh, the Dutch Tech Centre for Life Sciences, or DTL, is a public-private partnership of more than 50 Dutch life science organisations. So it's sort of applicable to the group here. It acts as a network of professionals that jointly improve the Dutch life science research infrastructure. And there's a focus on accessible, high-end technologies, fair data treatment and expert training. So they're very active in the fair data space. Um, you could say that they're, they're leaders or some of the leaders in Europe. Um, they're developing tools which what they make up or what they call the, the data fair port. Um, some of the terms they use are a little bit obscure and take a while to get your head around. Um, so they've developed the, the verifier and, the, and a metadata editor with that to create data, a fair data point to publish the data, a fair search engine to find data, and what they're calling ORCA uh, to annotate. I don't know why it's ORCA and not fair ORCA or something. Um, so the Verifier is an online software tool designed to address the commonly encountered problems and data manipulation tasks in the verification process. There's a new verb for us. Um, so the Verifier can thus speed up the process of data verification, especially for larger data sets. So it incorporates a metadata editor and they've also defined a, a five-layered metadata schema, which is able to hold repository metadata, catalog metadata, um, data set metadata, distribution metadata, and data record metadata. So it's quite, quite detailed and drops down to you know, very fine granularity. The fed data port, which is the publish aspect, allows data owners to expose metadata and um, data in a fair manner. So there's a, a GUI there for human clients and an application or an API for, for software clients. The search engine harvests some metadata available on the fair data points or compatible data repositories, so it doesn't have to be one of theirs. Uh, indexes them and provides a search interface. And then the ORCA is an annotate um, system which um, allows uh, human curation of knowledge graphs by offering graph annotation as a service and capturing the provenance of the annotator in the original statement. So altogether, the, the data ports an interoperability platform and allows data users to publish their data and metadata and allows users to search for and access that data. Uh, when data owners publish their non-fair data sets, the embedded verifier transforms the data into a fair data set before its actual publication in the da fair data port. So it can actually undertake some of the difficult work that's involved in uh, the verification sort of process, which is, which is nice. So this is, they're still developing those tools. Um, some are available and um, a lot are still being developed at the moment, so it's a good space to watch. Now, I'm sure most, well, many people are aware of Elixir, which is an intergovernmental organisation, which brings together life sciences resources from across Europe. <coughs> so DTL also work with them within Elixir. Um, they bring together resources to form a, a single infrastructure. And one of the pre in one of the previous seminars, we've talked about fair sharing. So that's a resource for the data and metadata standards as well as interrelated databases and, and policies. So there's currently seven projects underway with them. They're developing infrastructure around interoperability of services, uh, improving discovery of data through standardized metadata, harmonizing best practice around identifiers, using linked data to stick resources together seamlessly developing specifications for workflow and tool interoperability and a portal to promote best practice and standards. So um, that's, that's another space that's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Now, before we uh, launch into some hands-on um, goodness, uh, we want to briefly present a case study of the Intermine system. So, 
Intermine's an open source software product which integrates biological data sources, makes making it easy to, to query and analyze data. Now there's a number of instances of the software and each with a different speciality, such as the wheat genome or the human mind, which is this one here, um, which has a focus on the human genome data. So a few years ago, the developers of Intermine found themselves in a similar um, predicament to this group, and they wanted to make the system support the FAIR principles um, better. So they held a workshop and brain, brainstormed a range of improvements to the software to enable it to support FAIR data. So the above is a, a list of some of the items they came up with, and some of these may be um, relevant in, in this context to the GVL or the BPA portals. Um, I'll just rapidly go through some of those um, ideas that they've, they've come, come up with. So they're after more stable URIs. Um, so they wanted to, so this is the, around the identifiers, I guess. They want to construct an identifier incorporating class names and ID, IDs that form a, a primary key or an object. So this was a bit of a, a problem for them based on their software rather than using something like a, a DOI, if you like. Um, they want to register URIs externally. So their solution was to provide a one-click ability to register installations with external uh, repositories such as BioSharing or the Elixir BioTools and provide facilities to register top-level um, MIME products with um, fine-grained registries such as the um, identifiers.org. So they used an ontology already within their software, but they thought that they needed to extend it um, so that they could um, interoperate with um, non-sequence um, ontology um, systems. Um, but, but I think one of the key things that they, they recognise that they're not going to create their own ontology themselves, they're going to see what was, what was available to them and, and work with that. They um, also want to embed metadata in their web pages. So there was a problem with finding data sets related to particular bio entities spread out across many different databases. So they looked at the bio schemas as a solution to that <clears throat> and they want to embed um, you know, basic metadata so search engines can make the biological data on a particular subject more findable. They also want to add uh, metadata to query results, so make the provision of existing metadata, column headings, for example, consistent across their output formats. So um, add more metadata such as ontology terms, URIs, presented in the in the data model in, in the data model for objects in their fields. They also want to make objects uh, available in XML and JSON formats. They're also looking at integrating RDF into the software, which will improve the interoperability with other systems as well as Sparkle support. Um, and last but not least, better licensing metadata. So they were looking at um, machine readable formats such as Creative Common Rights Expression Language and BioCaddy's machine actionable licenses. So they've been working on these for quite some time and uh, are making good progress. And for them, the, the focus is on improving the systems, I guess, um, that, support, that support the fairness of the data as opposed to um, looking at the, at the data. So now we um, are going to move on to the interactive part of the workshop. <clears throat> so what we want people to do, and how many do we have here now? We've got more. Okay, so we might work on this as one group. And um, so, Maybe as a group, we want um, people to um, use the FAIR 
data assessment tool and using a um, either a GVL or a a um, either GVL or a by platforms collection or one that you've already got. Um, maybe try using that tool there that we've got a link to at the bottom there and um, Frankie's kindly put those links up into the um, chat window and um, have a play around with with the tool. It's a new tool which has been developed uh, just recently. Essentially, you'll be one of the first groups outside the development team to, to take it for a spin, so we're interested in your feedback. And um, just see, it should be quite self-explanatory, but just see um, how fair you think those um, those data sets are that you're, you're analysing. So we'll give people probably about five minutes of that and then we'll come back um, and, and have a, a discussion. Uh, feel free to ask any questions or any commentary. So if it, we were to go into the US version of Galaxy, look at the reference data library for the human genome build number 19, we'd find the current screen. If we drill down to the, that HG19 there, um, we get very similar metadata to what Jeff highlighted before. So it's got very little information there concerning the provenance of the data, which um, it does erode trust and integrity um, when, you, when you have minimal metadata, especially when you compare it to that AODN um, example I gave before and the rich metadata that they, they have. Though theirs isn't perfect, but it's, it's quite impressive. Now, if we were to, so if we took that iGenomes, that, that message there, so we don't know where this came from. So if we were to do a search on that iGenomes USC HG19 gene annotation, um, there's, there's a few things that come up there. If we select the first two, this is going into the Illumina website. It identifies a particular data set with no metadata attached just there. Um, or if we went into the second link in, this, in those search results, again, there's a data set there, but it's impossible to determine where that, where that data originated from and how it was produced and the parameters were used. And this can have a, a large impact on the final results of the experiments and in, and in science. So um, I think that's, you know, highlights what Jeff was saying as well. Now we're going into the um, next hands-on activity. I just want to bring your attention to project deliverables, which have already been earmarked to be completed for the project and are expected to enhance the fairness of the systems. Um, so the, the project managers have done some heavy lifting here. I'll just go through them briefly. So we've got the development of a prototype API to allow sending of data to GVL service, development of deployment of mature API to allow sending of data to GVL service, um, a general improve, imp improved alignment of BPA data repository with the fair data principles development of draft data persistence policy, development and publishing of mature persistence policy, publishing of descriptions of any API service. Sorry about the, the background noise. Uh, the head honchos have decided to turn up right now of all times. Publishing of descriptions of any API service endpoints in appropriate national and international repositories. Um, I, I won't go through the rest of them, but um, I think people who are working on the project know about these deliverables and their relation to fairness. So the next um, activity, we originally were going to break into the group, two groups based around GVL and BPA, um, and we we're going to look at the principles of this checklist, which I sent around in an email prior to the meeting, I think I sent it around yesterday, and determine, you know, we're going to brainstorm what can be done to make the data more fair within these systems. Um, and then what modifications to the systems, the processes and the policies 
which might be required. So we're sort of talking pie in the sky type stuff here. Um, I, um, <clears throat> I don't think we want to go too far into how these things are going to be achieved or done. Uh, we just want to focus on, you know, what what can what what we can do to improve the systems, and then later on we can have more focused discussions on um, picking those out that we might want to um, actually implement, and we can work with different groups, um, you know, myself or and RDSI, Nectar included, um, on on actually implementing some of those tasks. So we've set up two, so we've got the two systems, we've set up two Google Docs, but we might do this here as, a, um, as an entire group. Probably doesn't make sense to break out seeing as we've got such a small group. And we'll capture that information in a, in a Google Doc. Um, so I've sent that around to my, um, my comrades. So we've got probably about 20 minutes. We may not need that long, but um, to work sort of through that checklist and to um, see some low hanging fruit, I guess, on things we can do to improve the current systems and data and practices. So how does everyone sound feel about that? So, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, well, do we, do we want to focus on one system and then move on to the other, or do people want to... I think that it's good because the two systems are actually quite different. So the they BPA are. data repository is a data repository, hmm. whereas Galaxy is primarily a an analysis tool. Yep. Um, and, you know, the beep, you know, just things here like licenses, you know, I mean, I, I could almost comment on every single one of these um, for both. And, you know, I know that, for instance, the CCG are now have implemented a licensing, making that clearer for data items in the EPA data portal. But, you know, I have a question on licenses in Galaxy about, yeah, it's an excellent idea, but if we actually obtain the data from a international repository that doesn't observe a standard licensing um, framework, you know, how do we reflect, you know, how do we apply a license when there may not actually be a license on the original item for instance so I have, I have a lot of questions so so now you're getting into the how and well i mean you you need to touch on it i think but i think it's a first step i think it's good to go through and see to imagine the system in a perfect world what you would yeah. do to it um and then work out work your way backwards and some of those things will you know, will cost too much money or too much effort or will be impossible to actually implement. But I, I don't think it hurts if people have a bit of a vision of what it should look like in the future so that when these systems are developed, you know, going forward, um, they know to incorporate these things from the outset. 